Okay, hello, welcome back to a tropical podcast. You're joined by me, Shannon and Leonard. It's been a while. Well, it's been a week actually. So, by the time you you're listening to this, the previous episode has already been uploaded because it's being uploaded as we are filming this. So, yes. <laughs> there's that. Um, yeah, how how is everybody? I hope you guys are doing fantastic. We have finally gone past October and now we're, you know, first November. Amazing, great. Um, Halloweeny, Halloween uh, events are over, I guess. Uh, just you know, a quick check with you, Leonard. How have you been, and how have you spent uh, your Halloween? I spent half like my Halloween just basically at home, uh, reading and mostly watching Ooh. a few like mangas and movies. Nice. Some horror, some not. Okay, okay. Yeah. Very thematic on this episode, but yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I have not been doing much as well, uh, but yesterday for Halloween, I was with Yehez and we made caro- caramelized apple. Oh my god, caramelized apple. Oh, is it the one where you like basically cover the... Yeah, apple? yeah, yeah. But we did it in a different way and it kind of was a fail, but it's all good. It was good. It was sweet and, and, and nice, but... Um, the caramel was just too too hard. It it got too hard too quick, and it was like it was not enjoyable, and you couldn't eat it together with the apple. But all all over, overall, it's fine. Also, we have experienced uh, the blue moon. I think uh, sometime last night. Basically, the second full moon uh, in October, I heard, but I wasn't able to see it from my side. So I don't know if you were able to see it yesterday. Uh no, I didn't. Uh, no, like because because my the, the like basically at night time I can almost never see the moon. Yeah, that's yeah. why here too, which is weird. I can see the stars, but just not the moon. Uh, but yeah, other than that, everything's been quite dandy, quite spooky, I guess, because it's Halloweeny fever. Uh, but it's over now. It's November, and so we're going to drive back to you know, no, no, not drive back, but drive towards Christmas. <laughs> I'm like in my mind. It's like once October is over, it's December. November is just not there anymore. Okay. But but it's good. Uh, anyways, speaking of our episode for today, since you know we're recording this uh, literally the day after Halloween and after October has passed, we were thinking we're still in the you know festive season of spooky spooky. Uh, so we thought, why not we set our theme of the topic for today as something spooky related something halloween related and that's where uh leonard uh, and i came with the idea of well m- mostly leonard but but yeah we came with the idea of um discussing about horror genre yes uh, uh or at the very least our experiences with the horror genre like whether it with comes the ho- to oh, okay. books our experiences. Uh, mangas movies video games anything like that Ooh, okay books i might have some say in that but yeah okay yeah just a disclaimer uh between the two of us i am the least knowledgeable in horror because i don't actually enjoy horror as much i i try to stay away from it as much as i can but i do sometimes occasionally watch or read some horror like vibe things or entertainment but um the, to the best that i can i try to avoid it because uh i am scared of them <laughs> i'm scared of them so i guess that that's that's where we're coming in with my side on your side uh, Leonard, i think you're a bit more open and a bit more aware right or, or like at least uh, a bit more... yeah i guess like I, i'm more attracted to like one sub genre so far more than others but yeah for the most okay. part i think like in th- like when comparing between me and you uh i'm a lot yeah. more uh, open when it comes to like the horror genre. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Because I'm not the kind of person who would be on my own just suddenly be like, oh, I want to watch this show because it's horror. I would never do that. But if it was with a group of friends, I wouldn't mind. Because yeah, yeah. then I wouldn't be alone. That's that's basically how I treat horror. Uh, okay. Like a very distant, distant, distant colleague. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we will, yeah, we will begin with the topic. So I think without further ado, I will give the table to you, Leonard, since you are more knowledgeable than I am in this. Yeah, so. okay. Uh, before I'll start with the entire like discussion or exploration of the horror genre yeah. Yeah. um like my experiences with horror is only very much limited to a lot of mangas a lot of video games okay, uh, okay. a little bit of books and almost very little when it comes to movies only like the very famous ones that maybe I'll start Ooh, with. Okay, yeah, okay i almost okay. never watch horror movies and like i think a few of our classmates or friends will be able to confirm that like uh for sure, I think, 
like Archie or like Belgium and whatnot, they can they can probably tell. I'm really bad when it comes to horror movies. Is it because so you're scared I, as well, or you're not? Uh, not what? I I like I, when it comes like uh shock. I think is the better word for it. I hate getting oh, shocked. Oh. I hate getting jump scares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, mind. Yeah. I don't mind scary. Right. I don't yeah. mind the the feeling of like that tense feeling of not knowing what's gonna happen next. Yeah. Right. Yep. Uh, I don't mind that bit, but I do mind getting like shocked and like jump scared to the point where my heartbeat would just rapidly go insane. Oh, right. Yeah. So yeah, basically the physical behavior of horror or the yeah, yeah, the, the, the the like just basically direct like immediate uh, effects of horror, essentially the 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 shock aspect yeah, of it. Yeah. I don't particularly enjoy. it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But the you. sense of like, oh god, 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 oh no, 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 that kind of feeling. Uh, that I don't mind. Yeah, that's the one that I don't like. So yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, okay, that's so that's my that, that's that's like an introduction to to, to, uh, to what my yeah. experiences are here. So like, if there's if if the 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 like a lot of the examples I mentioned will probably be a lot of video games, a lot of mangas. So if I if like there's a movie here that I don't mention, well like. Sucks to suck. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm kind of the opposite from Podcast. you then, in a way. Yeah. I'm kind of opposite from you. It's like, even though I'm in general very low in like horror stuff, but when I do get into it, it's usually either books or movies. Oh, usually, okay. You know, like, for example, even for movies, uh, this month of October, I was actually, I've been watching like some some like spooky or actually carefully selected spooky movies with Yehaz. Mm-hmm. And my, my, my options were like the Adams Family. The little shop of horrors. It's like all the uh, all the all the whimsical horror, like Halloweeny vibes, right? But so like with the yeah, labyrinth as well. Is the labyrinth part of it? Well, I have never watched that yet. I don't think I've watched that okay. yet. But mine's more of like the more of the family family valued kind of shows, you know, like uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, uh, all that jazz. With Yehez, he 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 put out uh, what is it? The Shining, and then uh, uh, stories to read in the dark, or something like that. And I was like, uh, fuck. I- Cause that's the, that's for me that's scary but but I know a little bit of that like I've watched uh, Insidious I've watched the uh, uh, Haunted Changi uh, once before and Prometheus scared the shit out of me even though I know it's Prometheus sci-fi Prometheus as in the alien one the alien movie yeah, yeah. Okay. so really? oh my gosh you should watch the first one then this is why I tell you I do not like watching these things the only time I'm watching is only when I'm with friends I've never watched it alone okay then we should watch Alien because Alien is fucking amazing Oh my god, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. So, uh, yeah, so th- that's my experience, that's your experience. Uh, yeah. And like right now, I'm just going to discuss mostly about a lot of the uh, sub-genre. Okay. Mostly. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, because I find a lot of like sub-genres of horror to be very interesting, to be very fascinating. As like, it's okay. uh, because they mostly reflect the uh, like the times I guess they reflect the times when it, when they were particularly very popular, right? I, I, I'll, and I'll mention as well like gothic horror, zombies and whatnot. Like oh, gothic horror, yeah, 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 yeah. So stuff like that. Like why they're why were they terrifying back then? And I and it was interesting to see how those fears back then were a lot more prominent then than it is now, right? Yep, yep, yeah. understood. So, mm-hmm. speak, like, since I mentioned gothic horror, let's start from there. So, for example, gothic horror, right? So, gothic horror is essentially uh, any form of horror that combines fictional writing, horror, death, yep. and yep. at some very rare or even, like, usual occasions, um, roman- romance. Like, a sense of romance. Um, it's okay. Is gothic horror only uh, due to the time frame of the story, or or is it? It can be actually modern, but it's still considered gothic horror. Um, it can be modern from uh, from what I remember, but yeah. it's usually set in the like Victorian Dracula, era. Frankenstein yeah. Yeah. Uh, time period, right? Like I think yeah. out of Victorian. all the gothic horror that I'm aware of, Frankenstein is probably the most. Oh, okay. Modern. Okay. Right? The, yeah. For me, the gothic horror that I only am aware of, or at least I can like talk about the most, is uh, have you heard of uh, what is it called? Oh my god. 
Oh my god. I've, oh, yeah. Have you heard of uh, the book called Rebecca? Rebecca? No, I have not. There's a book called Rebecca uh, by Daphne de Maurer. Um, that is the one of the best to me. That was when I started be, being more open with gothic horror, gothic horror, or like those gothic kind of like spooky stories. But then uh, after getting like after watch after reading a few other books like similar to it, like uh, there were strangers. There were what is it called? The Little Strangers, something like that. I I realized that wasn't me because I hated horror so much, so that I stopped. Oh, but, oh, but, Rebecca, but Rebecca, you don't mind. But Rebecca, uh, I had to because it was for my literature class when I was in grade seven. <laughs> but, but but yeah, that was the only exposure I had with gothic horror. That's why I ask you: Is it does it have to be a certain period? Because no, for no, no. Rebecca, it was in the it was set in the if I'm not wrong, like Victorian era, like I think in the twenties, thirties, or fifty something like that. Uh, okay, it's in the nineteen. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. It says it's in nineteen. It's set in nineteen thirty eight. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's very, like, it's very old, olden times era. Yeah, but, like, almost, like, it's, it's I think, just, a, like, a couple of decades ahead after the jazz period, right? So, it's about, yeah. so it's not that, that old. But, yeah. It's not that, though. yeah, it's not that old. But it was when people were still proper, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how to explain. Yeah, yeah like, a very, very, uh, what do you call it? Very... Traditional. Almost, considered. like, uh... What was it? The Great Gatsby time of period? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yep, correct, correct, correct. Okay. Okay, so that's interesting. So you do have some exposure yeah. to like modern. Gothic only horror. this. Only Rebecca. Only, only Rebecca. Rebecca. Have Strangers, you read at least like Dracula or Frankenstein? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. I've heard of them. I, I'm aware of the storyline, but I don't. I have never like read read it. You know, as literature class, also no. Oh, that's interesting. Because uh, those. Because like those two are like the the granddaddies of the yeah they're like the if you think about it it's always like oh Dracula or or Frankenstein right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no no I've never so really... it's very interesting and and I find this to be interesting because nowadays I don't think we find hmm? werewolves like I think werewolves count right like let's uh, wait now that I think about it is Twilight technically a gothic or... hey, ooh. You were running in thin with that, but I mean, you 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 do drive a hard bargain, yeah, like because by definition, goth horror just is involving fiction, right? Yeah, like, Twilight yeah. is fictional. It's horror. Yeah. It has some aspect yes. of horror, right? Right. Oh yeah, definitely horror. You can see them eating, like sucking people's blood and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. death. And, yep. And the last but not least, the most like romance. Ro- romance, yeah. You're right. You're right. It could be <laughs> Twilight is gothic horror. Okay, that means I I I am I, I am truly exposed with it because I I like Twilight. I actually like the franchise. The book I, or the movie or just in general. Oh, I like the I I have never read the book actually, but I like the movie, the franchise movie. Okay. Like I, unironically, I, unironically, yeah, I, like in a... I unironically actually like the movies. <laughs> okay. In a, I I thought I guess because a friend of mine I know do like Twilight but in the uh, almost like in the room way like you know the so bad it's good yeah no I I think it's good for its time I thought it was good yeah and I didn't appreciate it as much when I was a kid but like now rewatching it again like I really like the first movie like the cinematography you know it was just chef's kiss and then like the way they all look so gorgeous like uh-huh. it's so hard for you to kind of cast members that gorgeous okay and not one up the other you know what i'm saying i don't know how to uh, explain okay, okay, okay. it's just to me i i like the twilight franchise so that means yeah i could say i'm pretty into gothic horror i guess <laughs> <laughs> if you want to put it loosely that way In a very very loosely i think yeah. yeah but you're right i think it can be argued that twilight is a gothic horror Technic- in a sense yeah yeah, yeah. That's yeah. yeah so that's one subgenre. The other subgenre, because uh, I'm just reading this based on a list that I wrote down. Yeah. Um, the next one is paranormal horror. Ah, okay. This is this is this is. Yep. <laughs> uh, this is basically almost, almost, uh, the, like almost the common, uh, type of horror that it is in movies nowadays. That is paranormal. Yeah. So when when we look at like ghost possession exorcism yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so anything that that involves yeah. dark fantasy and ghost stories so even like yeah. elder gods or something like that oh well not elder yeah. gods but like weird um like pagan gods or something like that i think would fall yeah, yeah. this category like demon or whatever right yep huh? yep 
like demon, right? Like demon, demon. Yeah, yeah monsters, yeah. aliens, like yeah. ghosts, yeah. zombies. Even I think accounts for this as well. Like it technically counts as paranormal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. So, what is your experience with paranormal horror? Like any um, horror? yeah, that that's the one where it goes. It tends to uh, lean to the movie side because like I've like I said, I've watched uh haunted haunted Changi and then. And then Insidious, Th- those are paranormal, right? Yes. Um, yeah, Insidious especially. So. Yeah, and then like arguably The Shining can also be considered, but like it's also there's a psychological factor to it too. So that's like. Yeah, yeah. Kind that's of I think the the like the in The Shining particularly because I've actually watched that one as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, right. Like there's in the beginning at the very least, I think there was almost a sense of mystery of whether Jack himself was like mm. going. Uh, insane, insane, or, or, or he is indeed possessed. I think. Yeah, but which is weird because like there are some moments where like uh, somebody did it. You know what I'm saying? Like there was one scene for me anyway. Like he was locked in a kitchen, and then suddenly he can go. He could have gone out from it, and I just thought, what the heck? Like he was locked in. How did it get locked out? You know? How did he? How was he able to get out? You know? It, it added some, some sort of like paranormal. Um, effects or at least elements to it, right? That's why I thought it's gray area. But um, other than that, um, oh, I also tend to like watch. You do you remember? I mean, it's still there, but like, do you remember BuzzFeed Unsolved? Yes, they still make they it. Used... Today. Yeah, but but I remember they used to go actually like ghost hunting, right? I don't know if they still do that now, but back then they used to go to like haunted places, right? BuzzFeed and... Unsolved. Yeah, it's like yeah, the most popular Ryan, video thing as well. Yeah, Ryan and Shane used to go to like places for where where the people say it's haunted, and they went there just to check it out, bringing their their stuff, uh, bringing their like tools and whatever to check it out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also watch a bit of Shane Dawson's one where she, he went to the haunted ship, and then he went somewhere haunted. But that 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 those were my experience. That's how I kind of like am aware of the paranormal activities or whatever because of those shows, you would say. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, like, have that's the okay. That's the only one where I would like actively look for like paranormal horror. Uh, yeah, that's actually the, that's the only time that like I'm by myself and I would watch it on my own. That was the only time. Other than that, like movies, mo- mainly movies, I would just watch it with my friends. And um, I don't really like paranormal horror. I don't. I I don't really enjoy it. <laughs> um, I have to agree with you in that case. Like when it comes to movies, especially. Yeah, paranormal horror is the one that I cannot stand the most because these are, because this particular genre, especially the ghost section of paranormal horror, is yeah. where they really really take it up a notch with the with the jump scares where they really abuse it. Oh yeah 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 definitely. Like a lot of movies abuse the jump scare aspect of paranormal horror. Yeah yeah uh, yeah. And by extension, because of that it's like one of my least uh, enjoyed horror. Um, you, yeah. you also mentioned a little bit regarding The Shining. Uh, fun fact, I'm not sure whether you knew about this, but you know the, I think Wendy, I think it's the name of the, the wife. wife right? The yeah, wife, yeah, the wife. Uh-huh. Did you know that the actress, I think, went insane or something? Like, genuinely insane what, in, in during the shooting of the movie? Was it was, was it because she was possessed? No, right? I only heard no, no, that no, she, she was wasn't possessed. As in, no, no, in real life. I'm talking about in real life. Like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. As in, like, I, I, I only heard that she was bullied. Like, she was bullied by the director or something. Yeah, she that, was bullied like... by both Jack and Stanley Kubrick, the director, I think. Oh! Yeah, that's why when you see the iconic scene of where she, when she, uh, when, when Jack, like, hits the axe into the door and, like, hears Johnny or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, you saw her face and the way she acted, right? Yeah. Yeah, we, I think at that point, she genuinely thought that Jack or, like, Stanley Kubrick was going insane and she was, like, genuinely terrified in that. Scene. Yeah, yeah. I heard ob- about the I heard about the bat scene as well, where she was climbing up the stairs. Like she, oh, yeah, she yeah, yeah. I, I heard that was also real. Like they they instigated her to act that way, which is like so sad because it's like you're playing with someone's sanity. But I mean, yeah. at, the end, at the end of the day, it was pretty good, you know. I, I I would say. I mean, it made a good movie, but my god, the the, the lengths they they went through for that exactly. movie. Exactly. I feel so bad for her though. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, but but she went insane, yeah, is basically. I think she but went a little bit batshit insane because I don't think she's ever been in any other movie after The Shining, or at least from what I know. Of- yeah, I remember also like I think her her act like her acting career. Also, when I was uh, briefly searching about it, 
like it was more like she did you know like emceeing for kids show like fairy tales or horror story show, but never like acting as a as a character in a horror story you know yeah i think she still uh, did a few other movies but mostly as like supporting roles like very supporting roles yeah yeah I feel bad though that she was bullied like in a way because it's like eh. yeah. but uh what is it she it wasn't it wasn't possessed like she wasn't possessed right like it no, was no, 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 no. she wasn't possessed or anything like that she just basically yeah. got bullied by stanley kubrick and that which yeah, i think was, is kind of crazy like the length yeah of i know yeah. right to get that emotions but um if uh, i mean going back to the whole paranormal idea it's just for me yeah you're right i that i think that's one of the one thing also why i don't really like paranormal because of the jump scares because i am i admit i am scared of jump scares um as tacky as it is i really don't like it like i still am weak uh, i'm i'm weak against it <laughs> so i mean i think a lot of people really hate the horror genre mostly because of that as well like oh, really? uh, yeah i think so at least because um we call it like the horror that i've been watching recent like as of late are like the korean movies korean horror oh that one is yeah usually yeah uh-huh. you, have you watched any of the korean horror movies because they're no, very good. i i don't want to <laughs> i don't not, plan on doing it they're not particularly like what do you call it uh like jumps scary they do like don't get me wrong they do have it they do have like mm-hmm. um like the the jump scare aspect but there's a lot of like very like almost dread dread inducing yeah 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 yeah, or, yeah. But, i think that's what I the think, koreans are very good with i think yes but for me i think i'm not I don't like the feeling because, like you said, you you are okay with like the idea of like being scared of something, right? And then, yeah. The, the, but the thing that you don't like is the jump scare, right? Yeah, like I, if you if you can make me feel like I don't want to go into the bathroom at night, like you've probably done your job very well. Yeah, without anything popping out, right? Yeah, without anything popping out, like that feeling of tense and nervousness is like the yeah. one that's like something I enjoy. I, I do not like it. Ah, okay. I hate it. So <laughs> for me. It's like, uh, yeah, I'm scared of jump scares, mm. but the one that I'm afraid most is that one, the one you're you're referring to. Like, I need to be honest. Like, I need to know why. That's the reason for me. Like you said, you're afraid of going to the bathroom, for example, right? And you're fine, yeah. and you actually like that feeling. I'm. I'd rather be scared knowing where what is in that bathroom, uh, rather than not knowing what it is and 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 having the fear of like whatever could happen could happen in that bathroom, you know, uh... and. That's what I don't like in 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 horror, uh, particularly paranormal um horror genre. I see, I see. Okay. Yeah. So so that's where we're kind of different, but like yeah, that that's where like I I, I we we kind of also divide. Like that's where your limit is the, the jump scare. My limit is way below you, which is once I start feeling unease, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. Because <laughs> there are horror movies that is just very creepy, but never really outright scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, I think the most recent one that I can remember very clearly is uh, a movie called like. There's a movie adaptation of, what was it? It was it was a, a movie adaptation of a game called Fatal Frame, I think, in Japan. Mm-hmm. They had a they had a movie called Fatal Frame, and in the entirety of that movie, there wasn't any proper jump scare. There are there were a few, I think, in that movie, but. It was mostly this weird feeling of like, is anything actually there? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, what about that kind of feeling? Like, are you? Okay? Are you okay with those? Yeah. yeah, I'm fine with it... those. Oh, uh, I, I am not fine with it. Like, I, I'd rather not. <laughs> I would rather not. You would rather not. I mean, I don't mind if I watch it with friends, but like I said, I would never want to watch it by myself ever. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> except, except for like the the you know Buzzfield Unresolved or or um the Shane Dawson kind of thing because in in a way it's more of documentary right for them yeah, it's not like really like an ex- like trying to explain yeah the documentary of and that's why happened. and that's why to me that was kind of bearable because like it's it's more of like I'm actually with them right like just uncovering it so I'm not alone but if I were to watch a movie like what you said or or the adaptation of that Japanese uh, game that you said. Uh no, I wouldn't like it because I would be. It would seem as if I'm on my own alone, you know. Like I'm not with anyone uh, dealing with the with the the horrific w- disaster event. So 
I wouldn't like it and I wouldn't want to watch it alone. Alone. Yeah, alone. At least I wouldn't watch it alone. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so well, is, yeah, something I don't really like as well. What? Yeah, paranormal is something that I don't I don't like. Oh, like again, that's not my taste. Yep. Um. Okay. So we'll go. Con- we'll go next down the list. Uh, non supernatural horror. Okay. What does that mean? So in this particular type of horror, uh, there's no supernatural forces at work. The elements yeah. of horror comes from dreading the unknown of our day to day fears. These stories are scary because they reveal how plausible the fictional events can occur in our daily lives. So an example uh, of this is what? the Silent of the La- Silence of the Lambs. Mm, I've never watched it. It's the one uh, we get Hannibal or the the cannibal, sorry, not Hannibal. Is it Hannibal? No. Oh, I've never watched it. Hannibal, but yeah, but... Hannibal Lecter, sorry, Hannibal Lecter, yeah, yeah. Hannibal Lecter I... the cannibal. I have never watched it, but like if you're saying like aspects of like our our day to day life, yes, like our human darkness, like for example cannibalism or. Mm-hmm. Or like, is it what you mean? Like murder, cannibalism, yeah, uh, like, uh, to abuse, s- like that. Yeah, uh, uh, like uh, abuse, like kidnapping, like for example, Misery by Stephen King. I'm not sure if you've seen that yeah. one either. No, I haven't, but I, okay. I mean, I understand the concept. But yeah, so, Silence of the Lambs, Misery, um, much more realistic horror, essentially. Or like, if you watch any of the like uh, house invasion horror type of movies where. There's like a killer inside the house of where the, people, the main yep. character is living on so forth, something like that. Yeah, yep. yep, yep. that's what supernatural, a uh, non-supernatural horror. Is. Oh, is it like is it like the orphan? Have you have you watched? Yes, that? yes, I guess so. Technically. Yeah, oh yeah. dear God. Okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I don't know actually. Like, I wouldn't say it's scarier than paranormal, or paranormal is scarier, but I still wouldn't like watching that. I think this is the 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 genre where like I would actually not watch it with people either. Like this is one of the genre where I'm just like I come to watch it due to a, due to a circumstance, but it's not something that I would like I would ever um what is it called? I would ever apply like not apply. What what is it called? I would ever invite people watching Ooh, it with me. To watch with. I yeah. See. To I, me... I, yeah. To me, this one is very interesting because non supernatural horror is like something that I think, uh, well, mm-hmm. not Stephen King. Stephen King does a lot of like very supernatural things, like yeah, for yeah, example, yeah. right? But uh, there was a manga that I've read a little bit of, and then I quit immediately because of how like not not quit, quit immediately. Like I've read a few like quite deep into it, but there was a few moments where I felt like. If I keep reading it, I don't know how what's gonna do to me. You mean like, like yourself, right? Like you gonna yeah. come something about yourself? Yeah, like, hey. because it it feels really like um, I'm just gonna say, like mention it outright. It's called uh, I think Trails of Blood in English. It's Chino Wadachi or something. What is that? Is it the one with the mother? No, right? Yes. 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 Oh shit! It's the one with the mother. Have you seen Wait, this? Okay. Have you? Have you? Uh, I mean. I've I've heard of it. I've heard of it. I think I've I have watched a video essay about it. How it's one of the scariest um, horror to ever exist. Yeah, because in that genre. Yeah, because huh? it's like uh, it, what do you call it? It's it has this weird feeling of like if you if you keep reading it, you feel like um. You don't know what's gonna happen to you or the main character themselves. That makes any sense. Like an accomplice sort of feeling, is it? Oh, oh no no no. So the Trails of Blood story is just ah man. I don't really want to spoil this. I wonder. I mean, you can it's, if you want. But I will never want to read it. I'll probably avoid major events. But, okay. Uh, yeah. The basic synopsis of the story is a uh, is like the, the the dysfunctional relationship between. A very o- obsessive and overprotective mother and her son. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The son yeah. being the main character, right? Yeah, this one I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, in the story, there's a, a lot of mention of the fact that, like, uh, how the main character, or not, sorry, not the main character, but the mother, right? Yeah. Is often portrayed as. Uh, 
we call uh, as a this this doting very like almost oppressively overprotective mother. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. And and we and like eventually we keep seeing how the fact that like her actions in in the book and the manga is it happens pretty fairly on that something is not right with the mother, right? Yeah. So something is not right very like very early on, but even with that, like oh man, I really I can't really continue to explain without spoiling anything. That's the problem. Uh. I, I, the thing is like I I kind of I already am aware about the plot in the beginning anyway. What what she did the okay, the, the main did, thing uh, of what she did I I already remember. I, I mean I'm aware of it. Um. Yeah, and and basically you're telling me that whatever she did, it's like down the line of the story. It's like trying to cover it up, and then like kind of asking this, like kind of controlling the son to kind of do things that she wants to be done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Almost sort of like basically gaslighting, yeah. gaslighting. Yeah, 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 yep, yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, and and like, you I'm probably gonna spoil that bit. Like basically in the story, uh, the mother is just constantly gaslighting the son in multiple very tenseful yeah. and stressful yeah. way. Yeah, and it it feels very sickening to see because yeah the, the 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 most terrifying thing about that manga, which again I haven't actually read that far into, I've only read like maybe what yeah thirty ish chapters, like thirty like twenty thirty chapters. I can't remember exactly when I stopped, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah the the the, ter- the most terrifying about that like since it's non supernatural, right, is the fact that like. The people that you know the most and the people that you love the most, right? Yeah. Have the biggest potential on, like, basically, scaring you. If you think about it, right? Yeah. Because in this yeah. case, like, the son to the mother, the mother is like an icon to him, basically, right? Someone that is, although he knows that she's she 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 might be crazy or something like that, right? Hmm. There are also the semblance of the fact that, like. She is your mother. She is someone that you should know, top to bottom of. You know. Yeah, yeah. And yet, the actions that she committed inside the manga, inside the story, basically proves otherwise. With a little few like throwbacks, essentially asking you whether she's she was av- actually ever sane or something. Um, so, is I mean, like, what made you kind of like off about it? Like, because you think that it's like so close to reality, like it could happen to you yeah, or anyone. Yeah, it, it's not happened to me. It's more like it felt very possibly real, like possibly real. If that makes any sense. Like it's someone you know is what you're saying. That's, it's like the experience. Not... It's like it's like the experience of like having someone you know or close uh, experiencing that. Is that? It is doesn't that even have to be someone I know or someone I'm close with. Like the very fact that how plausible the story is. Kind of makes you very uncomfortable reading it. Mm. Uh, to some degree, okay. it kind of it kind of reminds me of uh, I don't know if you know this uh, Oyasumi Punpun or Goodnight Punpun. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of that too. I think yeah. one of my friends or you, I don't know, one of my friends recommended to me recommended it to me a long time ago, and um, I am aware of the the themes that that manga brings, and I know that I am not mentally ready to watch yeah, uh, to read. Yeah. Uh, I also think Pumpun is, has a same feeling of uh, trails of blood or blood on the tracks, because oh really yeah, yeah a little bit not not in terms because like I also think Pumpun is not like their aim was not to scare you right like meanwhile yeah yeah it was to just be a horror right traditional horror yeah but I also think Pumpun has the same effect on me as trails of blood because and like and that's why I couldn't finish I also think Pumpun the first time I read it like I only read it a few yeah. times and then I quit and I have to yeah. read it again. Yeah. It's because of how plausible and very possible it feels. If that makes any sense. Uh, okay. So, would you say that, mm-hmm. like, for example, um, this? Because what I'm noticing is like whatever, whatever you were saying and how you were like um, reacting to these stories, like how you felt a bit uncomfortable, how you felt like you needed to stop and like it was weirding you out. Mm-hmm. Um, would you consider like animes, old school animes like Higurashi and and School Days to be like in that? In that kind of list of how you react to them as well, or is it different? Mm, so Higurashi is a little bit different, simply because, um, oh yeah, like Higurashi is. Uh, can you count Higurashi as non-supernatural though? I I don't actually know the story to be honest, but oh, I have. Okay, okay. 
But I have seen like some scenes of it, right? Of like, uh-huh. like torture. I literally saw like torture scenes when yeah, I was a kid. Yeah. And 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 um, to me, that was something that I was like, "Fuck no, I'm not gonna watch this." Okay. Series. okay. So if anyone tries to like, oh Shannon, you should watch uh, Higurashi. Like I know that like I- I'm aware of what's like what what they can show, and I'm like, no, I don't want to do that yeah, because yeah, yeah. to me the fear for me it's more. Uh, this is something that I want to ask you as well. Like, would you say that not a non supernatural horror is kind of psychological horror, or is that like something else? Is that different? Um. Uh... I think psychological horror can be non supernatural, but it can also still be supernatural, which I'll get into a little bit later as well. Oh, okay, okay. Some of the video so, games I'll mention. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so supernatural, non supernatural is like what you mean is basically in the realm of all things. It's very close to reality, right? It's very close don't... to reality, very grounded, yeah. and it mostly just um like basically applies the day to day fear of what yeah. you as a yeah. person have, like yeah. all the yeah. terrifying stories that you've seen, like let's say, like. Uh, human trafficking or stuff like that. Yeah, right? yeah. I think yeah. that that yeah. that ro- rolls around the non supernatural one. See, that and that's the plausibility mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. those things happening is, I think, is what makes them very effective. Okay, yeah. so I think maybe maybe I don't know. Maybe I can take a quick shot at it at it, but maybe for Higurashi, you think it's like the plus. I mean, it's real. It's I mean, it looks very real. It's very a slice of life. It's kind mm-hmm. of like the dark nature of human nature as well. Yeah. But, You're saying that it, it didn't really scare you as much because of the possibility, is it? Um, is the not just the possibility, but also in Higurashi, things happen really fast. Like in Higurashi, I at see. least when I was when I was uh, watching like a playthrough of it, because I watched the visual novel playthrough of it mm-hmm. before, mm-hmm. like a long time ago. So, like, pardon me if I don't remember the stories or whatnot. Yeah. yeah. But like, yeah, but shit happens. Really fast in Higurashi, and mm-hmm. almost to very little explanation. Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, like, it's more. It is horror. Don't get me wrong. It is like psychological. I think it's more psychological horror and like a little bit of murder mystery, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can't a hundred percent say that. Like, just because characters in the show is being tortured or whatnot, right? Hmm. I can't really say 100% sure that I find that terrifying because of its plausibility. Because I don't know. I think it's because there's there's some aspect of how it it's it's more like shock value. If that makes any sense. I see. Yeah. Okay. To me, But to we... me, Higurashi, Higurashi is a little bit more terrifying or more uh, uncomfortable to watch or read because uh, it's you know. What about it? Mm-hmm. Uh, what was about to say? It, it's more like to towards shock value. Yeah. Okay, but uh, okay. Um, what about school days? School days is just silly, I think. Okay. Also okay. a little bit to shock value, yeah. Because like, okay. sure, the guy cheated on like. <laughs> if you don't, if, if people don't know who, what 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 school days is, it's kind of silly if I think about it now. Yeah, like, but it was like the hype back then, right? It was it was pretty <laughs> hype, but for all the yeah. wrong reasons. I think it was just hype because of the shock value. Like, yeah, you wouldn't um, expect. You wouldn't like. Yeah, sure, he's an asshole, but you wouldn't see. You wouldn't. You wouldn't expect some like what happened to happen. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Well, like yeah. Value. Similar to Higurashi, I think it's like mostly shock value. That means for me, like what I agree with you is that when you feel like when you watch the the Pun Pun comic or you, when you watch the other one, the Trail of Blood. Um, you you had that idea of like, oh shit, this is too close like to reality. It might just happen, right? The the reality of how it could happen, like in real life, is 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 the one that makes is, me very uncomfortable yeah. and very yeah. like yeah. Uh, to me, those that happens when it for me, it's easily triggered. That feeling is easily triggered when it, when I even watch shows like, uh, Higurashi or School Days. Um, that actually scares the shit out of me. Do you know the anime called Bokudake? Bokudake, Boku, Boku yeah, that one. Even that to me was like something that I I was like, after watching, I was like, eh, I had to take a shower because I was like, eh, this is too much for me. Um, and 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 I noticed, and I noticed like, the thing is, as much as I don't really like it, I noticed that there are some shows that I still gravitate towards. So, for example, I used to watch uh, this TV show called Bones. Oh yeah, yeah, I know Bones, like the one uh, Doctor Brennan and. Uh... Yeah, and it's usually 
and it's usually to do with like murder or cases of like like those mad mad psycho people, right? Mm-hmm. Um, those are the things that are like kind of realistic to real life, right? Like mm-hmm. people, yeah, people can just go crazy one day and start like murdering people and then hiding their bodies in twelve parts in twelve different pots. Mm-hmm. Um, and to me, that scared the shit out of me because I was like, oh my god, this is this is real. Like like as in people, there 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 may be actual people doing this, you know? Like it's not it's not just like a paranormal thing, you know? Mm-hmm. And then. And then I think in a way that also applies to Conan, because for Conan, uh, it's basically for Conan, he he basically figures out like murders or he he figures out like like well haunted mysteries as well, but most of the time it's something to do with murders, right? Mm-hmm. And and that's where like I get a peek into like the darkness of human nature, mm-hmm. of like jealousy, of like uh, uh, jealousy, anger, revenge, hatred, you know, mm-hmm. and. And that scared the, that that actually scares the shit out of me. Like, I think the only reason why I'm into Conan is because of the love uh, factor, and the fact that like romance factor. Yeah. yeah, and the fact that like in a way it's not too real because Conan is literally a high school boy who's shrunk into a little kid's <laughs> body. We should be like, you know, it's never gonna happen, right? Or I don't know if it happens or not, but like it's very so far from reality. That's why to me it it was it was still okay with me watching Conan. But there, there were some instances where I felt like your, uh, like like your reaction with Pun Pun and with um, a Trail of Blood, where it's like, holy shit, like like this is very uncomfortable for me yeah, to watch. Uncomfortable to, to read, yeah. Yeah, uncomfortable in the sense where like, this is this is very close to reality, right? Mm. Yeah, and 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 those are the things that I like. I tell you, like, I which weirdly enough, I tend to 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 have exposure on it. On my own, mm-hmm. um, but I I selectively pick the ones that like I can handle. I feel if I were to enjoy it. Okay. But in general, I don't like it either. You you don't particularly enjoy non supernatural. Yeah, I don't particularly enjoy non supernatural one. Yeah. Uh, okay. Because I think for me, ironically, I gravitate towards non supernatural ones. So like I said, I read. Chino Warachi, and yeah. like uh, although Oyasumi Pun Pun not really a horror, yep. Like it does feel very like visceral, very real. Yep. Right. So yeah. So that I guess like it's more coming of age, like weird, very abusive story. Um, other than that, there's another one called Bastard. I'm not sure if you're aware of that one. Bastard. 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 It's a Korean one. Korean oh, no. Let me check. Let me check. Best yes. on I don't think so. Um, the other one that I wanted to introduce also was um, I don't know if you've heard of it as well. It's called Scumbag Loser. What? It's called Scumbag Loser. Scumbag Loser. Yeah. Is this like a movie or a book or? A... It's a manga. Scumbag oh. Loser. Um. Uh... It. 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 I don't know how to explain. I read it. I I think it was because uh, uh D- David like recommended it to me. I don't know why he recommended that to me, and I read it and I I did not like it. Comeback loser. Is this like a manga? Yeah, it's a manga. It's about this guy who's a comeback. That's it. No, 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 it's basically like it's basically like he's a. If I'm not wrong, he's really a. Short, like fourteen chapters. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty short. That's why it's like I could read it in one go, right? Sahiko Murai has exactly one thing for him: a keen sense of smell. Not exactly a sort of defining trait that helps someone become more popular. It's especially in the melodious sense that he finds particularly appealing. But that's okay. Uh, he sets the bar pretty low in terms of his expectations. Just as long as he isn't the biggest loser, he can get by. As luck would have it, there's always been one rung lower in his class's lot, social ladder. And when the biggest loser gets a girlfriend, a panic Masahiko pulls a name out of his past, Haruka Mizusawa. Naturally, everyone's skeptical, but when Haruka shows up at school the next day and backs up Masahiko's story, their skepticism is quickly laid to rest. But what he failed to share with his classmates is that Haruka actually died years earlier. So who's turned up wearing her face and why is she playing along with him at all? Masahiko's about to learn that there are far more horrifying fates than being the biggest loser. Yeah. So it sounds a bit like supernatural, but then like after I read it, the the thing that scared me wasn't the supernatural aspect, but it was the fact that like it was the idea of like the the psychological idea of like being a scumbag in the earth, you know? Like he said, like he didn't want to be the the lowest scumbag in the earth, right? Mm-hmm. 
and Classic. and he, yeah, and he had some sort of like pride to it or something like that. But basically, it, it it we get a peek into like what's really the issue with him and why he thinks this way, and like how in the end it turns out that like no matter what he does, he's still the lowest scumbag. And and it scared the fuck out of me. I don't know why, but I was like, shit, I'm not gonna read this ever again. <laughs> I'm um, might read it because I haven't actually read it, like read. Yeah, I think I think this is up your lane, honestly. And maybe you could give it a try. But uh, to me, it have all over the review score though. That's the one I'm a little concerned with. Like wh- from what I've seen, it's pretty low on the review score. Maybe it's because it's only like 14 chapters, so they didn't really the 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 plot didn't really like explain okay. itself as much. It was quite mysterious even at the end, if if, if I remember correctly. But but um yeah, maybe you could give it a try. Um, I just looked into Bastard. I don't really know what it's about. I'm seeing the Google pictures, but it's like only pictures of this this guy who's like mad. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, um, the story is basically of a uh, like a kid named Jin. Yeah. Who, who is like essentially, uh, like who is essentially like being, like no, sorry, not being helped, but has. Help his father kill people essentially. Oh, okay. Oh, so his so is a serial like killer. Assassin? Huh? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So they're they're. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he basically, since like since he was young, he's been helping yep. his father basically kill like a lot of people, and he's trying to basically escape his reign of terror one way or another, either by killing his father or in one uh, yeah, or, or escape. And oh, okay. uh, this one, although it's a little bit more "quote unquote" fantastical, mm-hmm. then look, let's say Chino Warachi or like in the Trails of Blood, this one also has a sense of very like when you mentioned psychological horror, this is what I meant from. Wait, not even Trails of Blood is psychological for you? Ah, uh, psychological. I mean, it is psychological. Like it's pretty. Yeah. It is psychological horror because you're basically seeing someone being gaslighted. Yeah, basically. yeah. Before your very eyes, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but this one is a little more. But but like I think this one is a little more. What do you call it? More. Um, neural, I guess. Neural. Like what do you yeah, say? it's the, like eventually at the end. There's a big reveal that basically causes your entire perspective to be shifted around, essentially. Oh, uh, for the ba- for bastard, is it? For bastard, yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is also another one of those non supernatural horror. Um, so bastard, what else? Is there any video game that comes as non supernatural? I don't think. So. Um, I have one uh, animated. Uh, movie as well. This this was the one introduced by Yehez as well, which I I would say if it wasn't for him, I would have never watched it too. Um, it's called Blue. What is it called? Oh my god! I was just looking at it just now. Wait, yeah, let me search it up. It was called Blue, 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 Blue. Oh god! Wait, let me. Blue. Per- oh, Perfect Blue. Have you heard of it? Yeah. Oh, is this the? Oh, is this is animated, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is the Japanese one. I think it's regarding. Dear God. Uh, I think it's uh the 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 uh the, the the is it idol? Yeah, the idol. Yeah, psychological oh, yeah. idol. Yeah. They tried she to was like in a way... movie, I think. Really? They're remaking it? No, no, no. Like not remake it, but like a uh, re. Imagine it, is it? Imagining, is it? Like, uh, I think it's called Black Swan or something. It's, it's like basically an American movie remade it or like. Oh, re- Black Swan? Like really? Yeah. Black Swan? Yeah. I think it's called Black oh. Swan. It's the one with uh, thing... someone, something Portman, I forgot her name. Yeah, Natalie Port, right? Natalie Natalie Portman. Yeah. No, but but with Black Swan, I didn't, re- I haven't really watched the movie for Black Swan, but I thought Black Swan was all about like. Uh, this person who was a performer, she was a ballet, and she tried to to fight her her title for it, right? With Perfect Blue, it was something more of like this idol. She was an idol, but then she changed. Uh, she wanted to change to become an actress, and then like basically, there were like things going on while she was becoming an actress that was like coinciding with her with her career. Like people were dying, and then like she, like it might be her, it might not be her who killed Yuta. 
Yeah, and you never know if I remember because I haven't I haven't actually watched that movie, but I do know like the themes that it tries to cover. I I watched it. I I finished it like recently, right? And and um yeah, you end up kind of knowing. But but uh, what is it? The thing that scares me is just the psychological impact it had on her. Like yeah. like it was just yeah. I don't know if that that kind of uh, is what you meant like with the whole murder. I mean with the whole like bastard idea or like the concept of psychological. But yeah. that was I, the exposure. I, 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 think, I think that counts. I haven't actually watched Perfect Blue yet, so like, I yeah. Really say I only know yeah. bits bits pieces of it. But I do know. I think Black Swan, the movie, it was trying like basically. Either a reskin or a reimagining of Perfect. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, I need to look it up with Black Swan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll look into that. Okay. Essentially, okay. They both. They, I think both characters basically started um, going in, like going falling into uh, insanity. Yeah, 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 yeah. They did. They did. Oh. Yep. 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 Any other one? Uh, I mean, like we could just keep going talking about the things that we've read or watched instead of going down the list because I think <laughs> we're stuck yeah, today in the non supernatural horror aspect of it. Yeah, but okay. I mean, I mean, aside from non supernatural, if you want to move past it first, uh, is there any other uh, genre in mind? Non supernatural. Because I have one more, but like, um, I don't know if you already had it, like, like a list down already. What? Like what? Mine is uh, dark comedy. Dark like, comedy. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Not not dark comedy. A uh, horror comedy, which is like kind of rare. It's like also a hit and miss for me. Yeah. Nowadays you don't see it very often. I think. Right. Right. But to me, I I leaned. The reason why I kind of understood, or at least be be a bit more aware of the concept of horror comedy, is because of musicals. And I follow like this musical channel, right? Called uh, Star Kid. They do a lot of like originals. And then like now, I'm, I I'm noticing that they've moved a path to a more like horror-based comedy kind of musical show performance. Mm-hmm. And I never really got it. Like I never really got like the premise of the show. Cause to me, whenever I watch a musical, there's always like a story, right? There's always a story. There's always a climax, and then there's always like the ending. But with horror comedies. With the ones that they've been doing so far, I've never really gotten into the 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 plot of their of their performance, until I recently watched a uh, Little Shop of Horror, the movie, the musical movie, and that's where I kind of understood why there's like a sort of comedy and there's also a, a sort of like a horror to it. Uh, if I could kind of like summarize it, it's basically the idea is that something to do with impending doom or like the end of the world or apocalypse. Or like you know, people turning to zombies, for example, or those kind of horror kind of stuff, like the the fiction, the one we were talking about. The is it gothic gothic fiction? Was it gothic horror? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So they they add ideas of gothic horror into a musical play, but they made it comedic because uh like the dialogues or the situations are like crazy. And it's kind of hilarious and and stupid, but at the same time. Um, the the running plot is basically like the end of the world, or people end up being uh, being into zombie. And the horror part for me is that it's never resolved. So like, with, yeah. So like, if we watch like paranormal stuff, like for example, Insidious or or um or like Conjuring or whatever, there's always an end to it, right? There's always like the exorcism is complete. They finished it. They got rid of the ghost, or the ghost uh, ended up like occupying someone else, right? With with a uh, black comedy, uh, sorry, not black comedy, horror comedy, especially for musicals, it's kind of that way, meaning to say that there's no there's no ending to it. So you just assume that after you finish watching the show, everything was pitch black. So it's like whatever you think of it is that horror for you. Like in horror comedy specifically. Yeah, uh, at least the horror comedies that I've watched so far. Yeah, so like for example, Little Shop of Horrors. It's basically a story about this plant who eats blood, right? Mm-hmm. And then like he kind of like get goes bigger and bigger and bigger. But then by the end of the show, it's like he takes over the world with all his little baby plants, for example. And that's how they ended. That's it. That's how they ended. Okay. Yeah, the the main character dies, everyone dies, and you just you're just left off thinking like, what the fuck? What have I been watching? 
that's it the world ended yeah and that's it there's no there's no there's no like redemption arc where like they rise again and they defeat the plants no the plants just took over that's it yeah. and and i was just like what the fuck like what's the point of it then but that's kind of the idea of what a horror comedy is in a way where it's like it doesn't make sense it's 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 use it's uh well not, not useless but it's like like um what is it called it's it's nonsensical but it, it ignites some sort of horror in you because it's like holy shit like that's the ending you don't know what else comes after it you know does Shaun of the dead count as horror comedy the what sorry Shaun of the dead have you seen that movie it's part of the uh, no. right trilogy i have not Shaun of the dead yes i'm surprised you don't know this movie because yeah, like you should watch anything edgar wright me the guy is amazing when it comes to directing Ooh, I have never watched this before. Is that oh, okay? No, I thought that was. I thought Shaun of the Dead is is um um. Who is that guy? The one who played Titanic. Uh, who is it? Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, I thought that was Leonardo DiCaprio. No, it's not him. <laughs> it's not. Oh, I've not watched Shaun of the Dead. I should you watch it. Should it's pretty good. Okay, I, I I will look into it. Yeah. So like, if, when it comes to horror comedy, actually. What a few in mind. Mm. So Shaun of the Dead is one of them. Uh, I guess technically, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what we do in the shadows. I don't know if you know that that movie. Nope. Nope. No, you don't know that one. That one is more comedy than it is horror. It has horror elements, mm, but no. it's more it's more like a, it's just very funny concept. Essentially, uh, about what we do in the shadows is. Imagine basically a lot of uh, like those mythical creatures, especially those from gothic horror, like vampires. Yeah. Uh, still live to this very day. Oh, oh, that could be comedy in a sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like I think it's directed by Taika Waititi, who did the Thor Ragnarok movie. Oh, I see. Okay. And one of my favorite, uh, what I got? One of my favorite comedies, comedy slash. Like family movie of all, uh, not of all time, but as of recent date, which is the, uh, oh my god, I forgot the title now as well. He did, so he did. Where is it? Not the Jew Rabbit, not that one. Where is it? Why is it? it's 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 more Kiwi. Oh, Hunt for the Wilder People. There you go. What? Sorry. Hunt for for the Wilder People. That's like he, he directed for that. He also directed Boy. I don't know if you know that one. Oh, I know the Boy. That one was yeah. Coming of age story, like New Zealand comedy movie as well. So he did that one. So he did Boy, Eagle vs. Shark, Hunt for the Wilder People. Uh, he directed Thor Ragnarok as well for the Marvel Cinematic yeah. Universe. Yeah. 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 Oh, what we do in the shadows, yeah. Yeah, what we do in the shadows is the one is is like one of his like first breakout movies. I think it's what made him popular. I think I I might have I might have I might have I have, might have heard of it, but I don't think I have actually watched it yet. Yeah, the trailer is hilarious already, so like, it's pretty good. It's a it's a it's I think it's horror comedy. I think this counts as horror comedy. Yeah, yeah it is. Even though I think it's yeah, more yeah. comedy than it is horror. Oh, okay. No, the boy that you were talking about that is not the one that I was talking about. Oh, okay. I don't know. I was talking about the the horror show called the horror movie called The Boy. Oh no no no. But yeah, oh okay, I might I might look into this one. I mean like horror horror if there's comedy to me, it's still scary, but at least there's the comedic side to it which makes me feel a bit much better about myself. Okay. <laughs> so that that that's that's where it is at. So that one so there's that Cabin in the Woods, I guess technically is a horror horror comedy. I don't know if you've seen that one. Nope, nope, nope. So Cabin in the Woods is basically a satire of the horror genre. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, it's basically making fun of the fact that like we have tons of horror movies and basically there's an entire company or organization that it yeah. that basically tries to appease the quote-unquote elder gods, which is a representative it, of the viewers. It's um, kind of like the scary movie, like those kinds of like satirical Yes, 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 to some degree, right? but the but I like the scary movie which is um like a lot more comedy. This one does have some horror elements in it. 
Oh, I see. Because I think the scary movie okay, is like I might... comedy, right? Like, yeah, that one is really poking fun at at ghosts. See, yeah. basically, like like doing it with ghosts. Like, yep, yep, yep. don't even understand. Yeah, 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 but okay, I'll, I'll I'll look into this one. Maybe I'll look so into the other. Are, those are my experiences with horror comedy as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, for me, that's the only genre that I'm aware of. Like the these, I think, four genres that I know of. Um, other than that, I would just give you the entire rest of the rest of this episode to take the floor because I don't know anything else. Okay. Um, for me, when it comes to horror, I don't know the Japanese. Like, especially when it comes to since I've been reading a few like horror mangas from like from Japanese mangas, yeah, I do notice that they have a particular very interesting way of doing like a particular genre of horror. I don't know what to describe it other than call it. Like kawaii horror, like cute horror. Oh really, kawaii horror? Yeah, I I don't know. I kind of consider like I I kind of like to describe it as kawaii horror, cute horror, which is uh, something that like where they have cutesy characters, cutesy anime characters, similar to like Higurashi but with less shock factor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So like cute. So the, like the characters are very traditionally cute looking. Like they have like almost keon type of art style, but then. Yeah, there's like things in the background or things directly like being an obstacle to the characters themselves, which are like horrific. Um, so good example of this there. is no, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I think the most famous example of this is Gakko Kurashi. I, I don't know the, ja- the the English term for this. Yeah. I don't know. They have. School life, sorry, school life, school L I V E. Wait, what, what? Oh no, I've never heard of this before. You don't have not... so this is these this... are horror? Huh? Gako Kurashi's horror? Horror. That's a horror manga. Yeah, you look at the okay. art, right? And you're like Like you look especially that... in the like covers, uh-huh. especially the manga covers. You, like it's very hard to imagine that this is a that, that is so fucking misleading, dude. Yeah, it's incredibly misleading. <laughs> Yeah, and this is the sti- this is the type of like quote unquote horror that I kind of noticed as of late that the like Japanese are very like very interested in doing. They also have a live oh, action. Oh my god! Yeah. Okay. Why would they do this? Oh my god! Can we just separate kawaii and kawaii? Oh yes. my god! Oh my. god. Oh my god. Okay, I'm seeing little bit pieces of like the 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 manga panels and I'm just like, yeah, this is not this <laughs> this is not the same as their cover. Like I'm literally wa- I'm literally reading one panel where like the girl walks in a room full of blood or something and she's like, "Qué?" because it's translated in just Spanish but it's like, "Qué?" Mm-hmm. Just basically, "What?" Oh my god. Oh my god, okay. So so you're saying that now the, 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 the Japanese are, are going through this route of like kawaii kawaii? Kind of, yeah, technically. Yeah, scary, scary, cute. See this one. So there's oh. Gaku Gurashi, there's also Kuro, which is a story about a girl and her cat. Wait, let me Google that. G- Guro or Kuro? Kuro? Kuro, as in black. Okay, Kuro. Yeah. Uh, it's done by an art. An auth- the author's name is Somato, I think, if I'm mistaken. Oh my God, no! But she looks so cute. <laughs> You're kidding me. Oh my God. What in the? Oh my God. Okay. Yes. Oh my did God. They make an no. No, I don't think so. It's just. Excellent. I don't think they've made it yet, but maybe they will in the future if it gets hyped, right? But. What the? F- yeah, she looks cute. Sadly. Yeah. So there's this type of genre, and then what else have I been reading that that's that I found to be very interesting type so far? Uh, at least if I can find it. Uh, I'm I'm gonna look at my list. Yeah, yeah. Go go do that. You go do that. It's not like I have anything else in the ta- on the table yeah, for yeah. you. <laughs> I've exhausted now? all my oh, no. knowledge. <laughs> Yo. So bastard. 
Sweet Home. Sweet Home is just... Oh, The Voynich Hotel is pretty interesting. It's a horror comedy as well. The what? The Voynich? The Voynich Hotel, which is V-O-Y and I Yeah. Okay, Voynich Hotel. Yes. Let's just see. That one is a horror comedy manga that, that I've read before a while ago. It's pretty good. I'm not gonna spoil anything. I'm not gonna say and it's pretty, it's pretty cute. It's pretty cute. Yeah. No, no, but it's not. It's not as like terrifying as like Kuro or uh, Gakugurashi. Though. It's like, it's more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's more comedy. Like I mean, I, I can sense the light, the, the lightness of the comedy. You know. Yeah. yeah. It's not as it's harsh as the other one. <sighs> okay, well. So yeah, this is the one I've noticed some Japanese have done, and it's a it's and it's a genre particularly unique. To I mean, I wouldn't lie; it's a good concept. Like it's an interesting concept, but at the same time, it's like I'm also kind of scared for my life right there. Cause like who knows what's gonna happen? What if one day like this this industry? I mean this this community booms, and then people start going for kawaii 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 wait wait kawaii kawaii, which is fine, but it's also like it's something like the VR thing we talked about. It's like it's new, and like I'm not there to to kind of be part of it, you know. So I'm a bit confused. It's not new, at least I don't think so. Oh, I mean, I mean, if it if it if it starts to trend, like like. Oh, VR, okay, okay, okay. You know? Because I feel like this one right now is still in the niche, kind of like the niche area, right? Like, people are still into the traditional, like, kawaii is kawaii, kawaii is kawaii. There's the fashion involved where, like, you're cute being scary, but there's no, like, plot of being cute but scary. So, that's... Well, we had shoujo, Madoka shoujo, which was yeah, also... Yeah, Madoka shoujo, I guess. Uh, like, oh, yeah, I guess that's also... That also counts. That also is considered... Like, a scary cute, right? right? Uh-huh. But it's like, oh my god, I don't know. Okay, I guess the moment it starts going to the the, the psychological scary and it's cute scary. Oh my god, I I don't know. See, I don't know what we can do as a human race because I think that would be scary to have like a cute person fucking up your brain mentally through the storyline. What what? No no, I'm looking at my list at the moment. It's like fucking up. The fact that you have a list <laughs> is quite admirable cuz I I had none whatsoever. I mean, this is like a very old list. Some of this like even though I I've, I've already read this, like I probably don't remember a lot of it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So let's see. Okay, horror. So there's Zerk uh, Miyako-chan, which is a story about a girl who can see terrifyingly hor- horrific things mm-hmm. um, in like her day-to-day life, but others people can't, and she has to basically pretend like she can't see them. Never heard of it. Uh, Miyako-chan, uh, Shadow House. That's also, I think, I-, I wonder if that's made by the same. Yeah, it's made by the same person. It's the same by the. Uh, so the person who did the Kuro, the cat one. Yeah. Uh, he made another one that's longer series that's like currently 50 chapters in. Mm-hmm. And it's basically about like uh it's it has a similar setting to Kuro, which is like in this mansion, like like noble really? nobility yeah. mansion. And yeah. there's like uh yeah. there's like basically dolls and like shadows or something. I haven't actually read it, I only saw the synopsis, but I'm I am interested in reading it later. Let's see what else is considered horror. So I mentioned bastard. Oh, this is this is one. This is like smut horror. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, there's like okay. a lot of different weird genres. There's Kuro. There's Sunny. Die Dark. Parasite. What was the smut horror? Huh? What is the the name of the smut horror called? The what? The smut horror. Uh, yeah. Ane naru no mono. Anenaru... Mono. Mono. Okay. 
It's about like oh. a young boy basically summoning a demon to become his sister. I think if I remember, correct. If I'm not wrong, I haven't actually read it. I only read the synopsis. Wait a minute, summoning to be his sister, but smart. Hmm. Where? Wherever will this manga go? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. I saw. I saw some of the panels. Yep. I can see why it's smart. Actually, a lot of the mangas that I really wanna recommend does involve like really unique type of horror. So, like for example, uh, I'm I'm not sure if I recommended you this before. Ajin. Oh, I I saw it just now uh, when I was searching for um. When I was searching for what was that one with the cat? Uh, Kuro. Yeah, when I was searching for Kuro, I saw one panel of like scary panel, and I was like, "The hell is that Kuro?" And I saw the definition. It was like I, I saw the description. It says Ajin, and I was like, "Okay." Yeah, Ajin okay. is very good. Uh, Sweet Home is also made by the same person, bastard. Like essentially, a lot of re- like I, I I read a lot of horror based manga. That's that's basically yeah. It. It's, yeah. Some I might finish them sometimes. Sometimes I don't. Depends on how enjoyable there is. Um, the one thing I definitely can say about the, my experience when it comes to with like horror mangas yeah. is itu. Uh, what it's called is gore. The gore level. Oh yeah. What's up with or, that? Or or the justification for that gore. Um. So like for example, uh, there's a particular, I think infamous cult one called uh, Dead Tube. Okay, wait, Dead Tube. Dead yeah, just, Tube? So, so imagine basically YouTube, right? But yeah. the reason why you, that particular, like Dead Tube is uh, famous is because um, like it's basically snuff films, like basically people... Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing the. Oh my god, these are gores, right? The, these yeah, is yeah, what yeah. you would consider gore, right? Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. is, is par- parasite considered as gore as well? I guess. I think it's more body horror. I would consider that body horror. It does have gore, like especially in the early. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's also one more, but this one is like I'm not sure if it's actually a uh, gore. Uh, Chainsaw Man. Oh, Teen Soul Man. Yes, yes, yes. Is that gore or is that horror? Or is it that just... No, no, what, it's, what is it's, gore, it's gore. It's gore, right? Body horror. And also like very body horror, especially to the main primary main characters. Yeah, yeah. Not my cup of tea. Really? What? You Wait, you you think this is my cup of tea? Looking into no, no, like... No, no, like, yeah, but I, it's not that bad is what I meant. Like, Teen you know, Man, but... Has I... body horror, it's like... like that. Yeah, but I wouldn't wa- I wouldn't read it on my own. Like I said, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take the initiative of like waking up one day and be like, you know what? I think. I think. I think I'll take a quick dive into the world of Chainsaw Man. I don't know. That's just not it's my a fun read, though. If you can. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, I heard. It's been. It's. It's. It's quite funny and it's quite good as well. But yeah, it's quite funny. It's quite uh, interesting. Like, yeah, that's all I can really describe it. It's very interesting. Very fun to read. Fun is the best word I can read it. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, going back to Dead Two, like, I cannot stand Dead Two. Oh really? It, despite it being horror, despite it being gore, like I really don't Why? like Dead Two. It's stupid. <laughs> it's all is it? Is it because of? Is it the concept of the internet where like you there's a specific community for like? No, actually, the funny thing about that is that. That part of the story is very interesting to me. Then, then what up, makes like, there's a, there's like mm-hmm. a community of group basically, um, producing snuff films to make money off of it, right? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That concept is interesting to me, but the execution on the other hand is what is really garbage. It's really terrible. It's really oh, terrible. I see. Um, okay. So like, how do I like? Um, I've read up to like the third or fourth arc or something yeah right and there's a lot of s- sections or part in the story where i think the author is trying to um the, the author tries to basically make us empathize 
with the main character, right? Oh, hello? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, yeah. yep. Yep, yep, yep. So there's, there's a lot of scenes where it's trying, like, basically try to empathize with the main character, but they always fail, like, it always fails to do so. Because the, the main character is very unlikable and has very little reason of doing anything. So the story of that tube starts off with the main character basically liking to record things or taking photos of things, right? Yeah. And even, and, and like at one point, uh, the school bully essentially asked him to record uh, a sex tape with, between him and a girl right okay yeah while he's doing so the main character is not aroused he's not particularly interested right yeah or, or whatever pretty illegal but yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, without the girl's consent right like no, the no, the girl, i think the girl consented if i remember correctly no. oh okay 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 that's weird okay go on yeah so so it, it yeah so they, they so the main character records this thing only to find only to Ben be shocked with the fact that like the girl started killing the guy, the the, the, the school bully or like the as he's recording it as he's recording it yes because okay. it was originally supposed to be this uh what called supposed to be this uh smut film or this uh yeah. sex yeah. tape right yeah and the entire aspect of the show is that only sex and violence is the one thing that can arouse the. The, the masses or the um or, or like viewers essentially like people are only interested in two things and, and that's sex and violence that's like the, yeah. old, the entire concept of what the, the the manga dead tube is about right yeah it's like uh and, and, it, and it takes aspects of things like battle royale and future diary mirai niki yep right yep. right and it's it's really stupid the, the execution is really bad. If yeah, I have, like if, there's if, no there's no depth to it, is it what you're saying? It's not there's not particular depth to it. Like they, they show it. They show a lot of gore, they show a lot of sex, they show a lot of violence in, in, in manga. But mm -hmm. it's not actually saying a lot of things. If, if that makes any sense. It's almost like I mean I'm bringing this back to what about uh cuties again where they're trying to basically criticize that the, the the thing that they're trying to show if that makes any sense like that too tries to basically criticize the fact that like we as an audience or as society really value sex and violence and it's the only thing that arouses oh. us as human beings right I see. without that, actually yeah. saying a lot of things about it it's just like a one-way train like there's not really much to say about it like like basically they've proved their point but there's no other like development to it it's just like proving their point once again and again and again without any like yeah, without any further elaboration on it is what you're saying is it yeah, there are there are some things that they could go with that like for example how far can how far with where like, so like the, the entire idea of that took is that since it, it's like a community of snuff films and people love to watch it people pay like millions and millions of dollars a yen mm -hmm, to watch mm -hmm. them and like whoever i think there's also some aspect of like if you don't reach the number one or something like that you die yeah. Like if you have more views than another person, you die or some shit like that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it, they could go very far with that with that concept or with that idea of like basically, yeah. okay, how far will this community of people or like we as a society will go to obtain entertainment or uh, like how how like like how far can we go before entertainment becomes too dangerous or maybe something like that, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's it's very shallow. I think is what, is what yeah, yeah pretty and, clear uh, part is basically yeah yeah so like there's three like i think three memorable arcs that i remember so the first arc is where uh the main character and the girl so the the girl is like the girl kills the guy right the the mm -hmm. when during the sex and mm -hmm. then she talks talking to the cameraman the the main character like he he is he is aroused seeing as the guy died basically. Like, what the heck? Okay. Yeah. He gets sexually aroused. And, um, because of someone dying. Yeah, because of the guy dying. And okay. it's like, yeah, sure, okay, that's a whatever. I guess people are fucked up, blah, blah, blah. And so there's like a few. Oh no, there's four arcs, I guess. I know. Four arcs? Three arcs. Even I can't remember. 
So the first one is the very introduction of the character, where basically he, he's part of the like videography club or photography club, right? Yeah. And basically, uh, he has a crush on the club's president, only to find out that everyone else except him was trying to murder him, was trying to kill him so that they could post it on death tube or something. Like that. Trying to kill the president. Yeah, the main character. No, the main character. Oh, okay. The main character is part of the photography club, and everyone in the photography club is trying to kill the main character so that they can upload it to Death Two. Oh, okay. That's, that's like the first introductory arc, as uh, essentially, and then the second arc is where they got somehow trapped on an island in the middle of a storm, and there's a serial killer. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a serial killer in this island that's killing them, and they have to figure out who it is. Yeah, and, and that's like the weird part because I don't think it has anything to do with that too. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. You're right. I was about to say like being stuck in an island like that's really kind of like a whole different I dimension. Think they were trying to record something. Oh, okay. At, at the end of the day, it has nothing to do with that too. And very, like very, I think they only mentioned that too at the end, where they're like, oh, everything that's happened here will be recorded and then posted on that. <laughs> and then the third arc is where the main character sisters kill her. Father, I think, killed their father. Okay. Like beheads him, puts him in a fridge. Like, okay, so you, now your sister is a fucking killer for no fucking reason other than the fact that like, he, like it's for death too. And not to mention the sister herself. She said like yeah. she didn't know that the person that she killed was the father until she was like, how then who the fuck put it in the fridge, or the freezer or something? It's like yeah, like fuck? it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's inconsistent. It's very inconsistent. It's very stupid. And and that's where I was like. And that, that that's the type of horror I really don't like. Just very shallow, like mm. very, like no 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 nothing to say, nothing to show for. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess like uh, just to wrap it up as well, like since we already kind of uh, gone overboard, but it's yeah. it's also because I, I also was talking a lot about <laughs> Twilight. Twilight, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but just just to wrap it up, like with with the idea of like uh, what is it horror in general, right? You don't like basically. You don't like the ones that are just very, very surface level. Like you're not really into those. Almost like a B movie level of horror. That makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's like it's basically they're just scaring you just for scaring you. But it, there's not really much like depth as to why you're scaring you or how they're scaring you. It, yes. it, 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 like, that, that's why. That's why to you like with Pun Pun and with um with Trail of Bloods like. Th- those were the things that you were kind of more that you kind of prefer, is it as compared to uh, Dead Tube, for example? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, yeah. yeah and I think for me, basically scaring you for the sake of like just to show you. Yeah, like, to show you, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then then there's no other like plot into it, or there's no other things to be had. Like they 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 already made their point, but they're still yeah. making the same point over and over again. Is what you're saying, it's right? Even, it's not even the same point over and over again. It's just they're trying to say something but they're not doing it very effectively yeah yeah as a, compared to like even if i i haven't even read trail of blood yet but i can tell like with trail of, trail of blood like they have they, they make a certain point but they don't make it so short that you understand the point right and there they made it as like a like a journey where you understand bits and pieces of these this yeah, point they're making, right information that's always causing you to either doubt yourself as a viewer as a reader yeah yeah or doubt the sanity of even the main character and the mother herself. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's like building, building on to the temple, basically, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, that's kind of that's kind of a good, good, good understanding as well. Um, and that's uh, like, other... that's like mm-hmm. probably that's also like very good explanation of what I like in the horror genre. I play. Yeah. Not yeah. not the straight not the straight to the face kind of genre. Yeah, it's more to the building up and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 There always needs to be build up in any horror, but like it's how you execute the catharsis, the release, as, like of that particular tension thing as well. True, because like for me, whereas for me, it's like I don't like either. So it's like that's why I'm not really into any of this. Other other than the fact that like if I have some friends over, then maybe. But if it's by myself, I would never do that, right? Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. I I guess like going back to our genres, right? We already we already dealt with gothic. We've already dealt with uh wait. Gothic, Not gothic supernatural, uh, parano- paranormal. We did a bit of psychological, uh, yeah. non-supernatural. 
Yeah. This is there. That means out of the four we have discussed so far, like which one do you think resonates the most with you? I think I think it's the non non paranormal one, is it? Uh yes. For the most part, yes. I think Okay. I think non supernatural is the one that uh resonates with me the most. But there are a few exceptions like um psycho like I think psychological horror if it's done even more effectively than the idea of like the the realism aspect of the horror itself i think i yep. might like lean towards that as well oh okay yeah. that's, that's... so it's a tough call oh is hell girl considered as paranormal or non paranormal par- par- paranormal par- paranormal par- par- right it's paranormal yeah, Yeah, but to me, it's because there's some sort of reality to it as well, like where people make deals with the devil and then they themselves yeah, get like deviled. Make, yeah, make the make yeah. the deal with the devil and you will. So that's what scared me also. Like like oh shit, it's real, you know. Um, I think to me, what sticks the most is gothic, probably. Gothic. Horror. Like, yeah, not not too not too deep, but like the ones like Rebecca or even like Frankenstein or Dracula. I can still I can still try to read or watch it by myself. That's mm. that's basically it. But the fun part for me is usually like, uh, like Twilight. You know, like they they add other elements into it, not just horror straight up. I guess so, like your preference is possibly like uh, how, mm-hmm. like uh, what do you call it? Like it's more like genres adding a little bit of like salt and pepper, as in salt and pepper, as in the horror bit. Yeah. Yeah. Not the horror bit. That's the one that's standing out because I don't. Yeah. I'm not into that. Yeah. You're not into that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess since like we we've kind of like elaborate a lot about like the types of horror and then like what we've watched so far, what we've read so far. Uh, is there any other particular like show or any other like um genre or or whatever that you want to talk before we move to our key takeaways? Uh. When it comes to video games, I don't think there is, because video games is very basic. But there is a very interesting aspect of when, so like when the so far we've talked about books, games, eh, sorry, books, mangas, and movies, right? Yeah, yeah. And in those cases, like the horror genre is very passive. If that makes any sense. You are just a viewer of what's happening. Yes. Uh, in the Correct. world in front of you. Correct. In, and. It, And when it comes and and like in video games, a little interesting in the sense of like you are dealing with a character that you're actually playing as, you know? Yeah. Like so you're basically, you, your yeah. horror is their horror, right? Yeah. Basically, yeah, because you're the one controlling them, or you yourself are controlling yourself, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, like for example, in let's say popular one like Resident Evil, for example, in the zombie, like yeah. game. The yeah. horror comes from the fact of like, like when you don't have enough bullets to kill a zombie, or the rush of trying to find a particular key to open a door while being surrounded, or shit like that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So those, and and I find that very interesting, very fascinating. Where like loss, failure, tension, um, and and even to some degree where like just trying to avoid seeing your character's gruesome death. Yeah. It's also like almost like a motivator of making sure that you don't want to die or something like that. I think that's mm-hmm. very interesting. Because mm-hmm. unlike, because unlike horror movies and horror books or mangas, if a character dies, it is very, uh, like it is very sad and very tragic, right? Yeah. But it's not your fault. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was about to say. Like, I think that make what makes it a bit different with games is that. It's it's because of you, you know. It's it's in your hands whether it fails or dies or gets haunted or whatever. It's because you have the call because you're the one playing it, right? Mm. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Like as in, if someone dies, it is no one's fault but your own, or sometimes yep. at least, like most of the time, unless like there's a some kind of plot narrative that essentially forces them to die or whatnot. In that case. Like yeah. whatever, but in when it comes to, when it comes to your main character in particular, mm-hmm. right? You are the cause of their death, and, yeah. and like trying to avoid them becomes like a motivator for you as a as a player, and that's and I, I find that very interesting. Yeah, I think I think, um, 
I agree. And I think that's the reason why I try to stay away from horror games. Like, at <laughs> least me playing on my own. I usually watch other people play. Okay. Uh, but but for the most part. But, like, in general, I don't I don't actually even go to even horror movie, uh, horror games. Which is sad because, like, I love pixel games. You know, right? I like I like pixelated games. Like, like mm-hmm. the, the 2D pixel games. And most of them, I notice, is that most pixel games tend to be horror based or at least like a portion of uh the games of pixels are usually catered to like the horror section like ib and then i forgot one more like 2012 pixel game where like there was an apocalyptic horror and i as much as i love pixel games i would never want to play that because i am scared shitless and that's why i get scared funnily enough um I don't. So you said like basically a lot of like horror games are pixelated, is it? Yeah, yeah, I noticed yeah, yeah. that. Uh, and the way I see it, yeah, it's more like, uh, it's more like the be- like uh, it's it's more like the idea of the fact that like um, pixelated games make horror games more terrifying, in my opinion. Yeah, which I don't get. I don't get why. Why? Why do you? Why? Why do people think that um, pixelated games is, is makes it more terrifying? Is it because um, it's not clear? It's more imaginative, or it's it, there's some aspect of that where like you're trying to fill the gaps of what's happening on screen. Um, but there's also the idea of the fact that like uh, when it comes to horror games, you don't want to. There, there's there's someone who said like a reviewer that I watched who said that. Uh, when you want to play when you're playing a video game you don't want it to feel like you're playing a game that's that's like you bought it somewhere official you know right you want game you want a horror game to look like as if you picked it up in an abandoned warehouse or something like that so it's like old school yeah, or like or old like school it felt like someone made it with like a bootleg resource and it's like, yeah it's like like, like sonic like, exe it's, 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 yeah almost in a in a almost in a sense of like desperation or something like that And like you're a, saying pixel gives off that vibe, the desperado vibes, is what you're saying? E almost, yeah, I guess it's like almost this, like experience if that makes any sense. And that bootleggy experience basically makes horror game feel a lot more terrifying. And that's why pixelated games, because pixelated games tend to be like bootleg, like uh, shoestring budget usually, right? Especially like the yeah. very yeah. yeah, and that one makes it more terrifying. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I get. I, I guess I get. I get to see your point. But to yeah. me, it's like it's such a waste because I feel like I want to play casual pixel games. But every time I start playing pixel games, the list that starts always has something to do with horror first. Um. That's why I thank the gods that they meet like you know they meet like um, what is it? They meet Stardew Valley, for example, which is like purely just casual game. Even Rakuen, at first I thought it was a horror game, okay? Because like there's some settings or some some moments where like I was scared for my life, because I was like, oh, this is so spooky, you know. But I get I get your point of why pixel games is supposedly horror. Uh, but I think with with horror games, I think we can have our own like we can have we can have our own separate episode in the future. I think because I feel like that's such a bigger lore because like that's already kind of different from the usual. Uh, the usual medium that we use, like the one we've po- we've talked about with like movies, shows, or cartoons or or manga, because like with games, it's like you said, it's us who controls the the momentum, right? Mm-hmm. So I think it's like a whole set of different experience because now you've added uh, your immersion into it as compared to like a normal like you know a normal manga where you know that it's not you you know that the, the the author didn't write a story about you it's about someone else but you're just watching them right but when it comes to games it's like you're moving them you decide their fate in a sense especially if they're like choices right yes um so and mm-hmm. like also like coming back to the pixelated aspect of video game as well um yeah. i don't know how creepy this is for you i'm going to share it in the uh, okay yeah so this is a game i found out recently uh what is it oh my god i uh, just play yeah. it. okay let me play it i guess how how scary do you find that in 
Like, this is from a game. It's called Jesus Christ. I don't... Wait, let me play it first. Hold on. I'm scared of the uh, avatar. I'm scared of the avatar. Have you heard the sound it makes as well? Yeah, yeah, I have. The first, the first second I heard it, I I paused it and I kind of took a breath and I was like, "Fuck." <laughs> yeah. So, like, this is what I meant when I was talking about how, when it comes to horror games, you want to make sure it looks like something you. Pick off from an abandoned warehouse because this is something I would expect <laughs> coming out of an abandoned warehouse. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I'm scared. Uh, for of those it. Who, for those who are just listening, um, we're t- we were talking about an animation of a uh, Michael Davis from a game called Faith. I recommend you guys look that up. Mm. If you got the time because it's fucking terrifying. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I stand, don't think I'll ever. Can you stand something like that? What? Can you stand looking at something like that? Uh, for a gameplay, no. Even though it's pixel, I don't think I would ever want to play that kind of game. You, I like I told you, right? Like Rockwind scared the shit out of me, and it's not meant to be a horror game. But like, there were moments where, like, when I was alone in the hospital, like walking around alone, I was already like, "Fuck this shit." I I kept telling David because he was the one who recommended me to play it, right? And I was like, "David, I swear, if this is horror game, I'm gonna kick your ass." He's like, this is not a horror game, chill. And I was like, yeah, but it feels like it. Yeah, so, no, I would have... If if even not a horror game, I would be as scared as that. Imagine a truly a horrific game like this. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't <laughs> enjoy it. I, I, I would consider that to be the more tame things you see in, in the game as well, believe it or not. Oh my god, it's actually a thing of faith. Yes, faith. It's a it, it's a game that basically revolves around the mass, um, like religious, like you, you know when there was some kind of like uh, hysteria over de- like demonic cults or demonism back during the nineteen hundreds or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I think there was so. a lot of people basically saying like, oh, there's satanic cults, uh, people worshiping Satan or whatnot. And there was like mass hysteria mm-hmm. around that. This big. Be- this game basically uh, revolves around that horror. That. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I you probably won't be playing it. <laughs> Just say. Yeah, I played that the other day. It's like oh, the the animation. They're not particularly terrifying, but they make they make me shiver looking at how they move about and stuff like that. Yeah. I can tell. I can tell. And the sound and doesn't. Good... The, the sound it makes doesn't make it. That doesn't help it either. Yeah. True. And and that's the thing. That's the thing that I'm worried about pixel games because I like the casual ones. And then you know I might just randomly think, oh, it's 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 pixel. I'll just play it. And it turns out that it's actually full blown horror. And I'm like, no. You know Lisa, the game Lisa. Yeah. It's not. That's not technically. It's not. It's not horror, but even I am shook by it because I was like, "Fuck this shit! I don't <laughs> want to be part of this." Okay. It's so scary just looking at the blobs and shit. I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm out. Um, okay. Yeah. So yeah, for sure, we have a uh, we've drawn the line with how far I can go with pixel games. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So yeah, I guess I guess for pixel games, I know sorry, not pixel games, but horror games. I think we can really talk about it even further, like after uh, for the following podcast. Um, for now, I think we've already get. I mean, for today, I think we've already kind of kind of gotten around the grasp of like just a few horror. Gen- I'm pretty sure there's more horror genres in in the world out there, but at least the ones that we are aware of, or at least yeah, the ones that we're familiar we- with, at least yeah. Yeah. So so far, you know, we've we've. We've gone through at least, I think, four or five genres, and I think that's pretty good. Uh, before we go to our t- uh, key takeaways, uh, what are what is one of the things that you have listed so far that you want to recommend to the readers, I mean, to the audience, the hear, the people hearing this, or to me? What uh, would you... So which one definitely you? the Manhua Bastard, and the ones that I mentioned, like Kuro, and... I don't know if I can recommend Gakko Grashi, because that mm-hmm. depends on the person. I don't even know if I can recommend it to you. Yeah, yeah. It, it yeah, does have yeah. a lot more tragic instances in the story. Yeah. 
yeah so if you're if you can't stand like tragedy or whatever mm. stories with you know fuck, no okay. that's not your cup of tea then i don't oh. recommend kakugurashi but uh but i can definitely recommend bastard and technically i guess the spiritual successor to that uh sweet home okay they're okay. both done by a korean artist named uh, kim carnby so So bastard or uh, and or sweet home, yeah. Or sweet home. Sweet home has a lot. Uh, bastard has more psychological, realistic horror. Uh, sweet home has a lot more uh, Lovecraftian horror and like oh, pure unknown. I... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, okay. Sweet home has that. Uh, at the very least, the art style projects that type of horror. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think for me, the one I can recommend is Rebecca. I think that you you can try to give it a go. Uh, if you want, oh, the, oh, the, the one that you mentioned, yeah. The, the yeah, movie. but if you don't if you don't want to read it, there's actually a movie on it. Uh, but it oh, was set in the 50s. Yeah, the, I I heard they're gonna start they're gonna make a remake of the movie in in 2020. But I suggest watching the original one, which is like in the 50s, where it's black and white. Also, so there's an original. There's a movie of that as well. Wow. Yeah. There's a movie based on the book, but it was like set in the 50s, I think, if I'm not wrong. That's kind of like, crazy, considering that it's like it's only a 14 chapter. Yep. Story. Yep. That's kind of insane. But, yeah. but there's a book. Uh, there's a movie about it. Oh, so sorry, not not 50s, 1940. It's by Alfred Hitchcock. I mean, you know, Alfred Hitchcock is very known for his like. Hey, what? Wait, you're talking about the Biggest Loser, right? No, 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 Rebecca. Oh, Rebecca. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> I said uh, Rebecca. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't hear you said Rebecca. So, that's why I was... so yeah, I was saying we. That's why I was like 14 pages. I was like, wait, 14 chapters. I don't know how many chapters Rebecca has, but like, it's pretty short. The book is pretty short. But Rebecca. if you're not into reading it, then you can just watch the 1940s movie. I think it would be nice because it's in black and white as well. Let's see. Yeah. So Rebecca, they, there's actually a lot of. The newest oh. one is on Netflix. Yeah, that's why I said uh, for the 2021, uh, there's a new one, 2020. But I suggest watching the 1940 one, uh, directed by yeah. Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, because that one is one of I would say it's pretty good. I I like it. Okay. It's pretty good. Yeah, I guess that's all. Uh, I think before we end this call, I mean before we end this podcast episode, uh, key takeaways. Uh, do you have any key takeaways? Uh, key takeaway is that. We're both not particularly very good at certain parts of horror. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's very true. Definitely me, right there. Yeah. Um, my key takeaway is basically uh, I can't believe that the Japanese have evolved to kawaii kawaii. That's something uh, that's kind of innovative, but also scary. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I would say horror is up to you to decide which one suits you the best. I guess like you don't have to like a particular. You don't have to like all horror. You can like just specific genres of horror, and that's fine. So yeah, I guess that's it for this episode. Do you have anything else before we log off? Uh, no. I think that's it. Okay, so I will. Uh, we will end the podcast here. Thank you so much for listening to our horror stories and genres discussion. Uh, we hope to see you in the following week with another topic in mind. Uh, Halloween's over. October's over. So see you on. November. Bye. Oh my gosh, it's November already.